everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another live class. I'm excited for this one. I'm always excited to paint flowers. I don't know about you, but Painting flowers is like my happy place. Um, any type of flower, really. I don't really have a favorite. I just, I love flowers. I love nature, honestly. Um, but yeah, if you are here live with me, say hello in the comments. I'm excited you're here and I'm excited to paint. And um, we already have a couple people in the comments. Hello, um, Aisha, glad you are here. Um, just a couple things, a little housekeeping. Um, if you, are not a part of my artist community, please go over to Facebook and join the artist community. I just posted a link. I'll also leave a, um, a link up above and it's also in the description. So um, join that free Facebook group. You can share your work and see all, literally all of the classes that I have ever done online, whether Patreon or YouTube. I have all of my classes in the album section and you can see all of it um, so that's a really good resource um, for you to see what classes I do you can also scroll on um, on my YouTube but I don't have any of my patreon classes on YouTube so you won't be able to see those so if you want to see what's in my patreon um, definitely go over there but um, anyways yeah so my my Facebook group is free you can join share your work from all my live classes and um, I'd love to see your work um, hello I'm excited about today's class. Me too. We're going to go over supplies real quick. Um, if you're not a patron, um, you won't have access to this, but you can for $5. Um, I spend a little extra time each month um, providing a traceable for all of my live classes for those who want. It's not required for my live classes. It's just for those who either struggle with drawing or just don't want to draw it beforehand um, and they want some a little extra help um, I spend a little extra time um, so that's what the traceable looks like for the 11 by 14 if you are on a 9 by 12 which you can totally do it um, I also have a 9 by 12 available as well in there and that's all in my patreon um, but if you don't want to do that go ahead and draw it on now I'll be going over um, like basic shapes with you and we can kind of paint draw it on a little bit um, essentially you want the main focus of your um, uh, kind of off to this off to the side in the lower if you if you cut this in fourths you want it in the bottom right corner um, the bottom right fourth of it um, so that's where the main circle so if you want you can just draw a circle there and then kind of go out from there. Usually when I'm doing flowers and I don't have like a traceable or something to reference on my page, I will typically, um, I will typically draw out the center, the stamen, the circle, and then I'll draw very lightly a larger circle. And then all of my petals can kind of roughly go to there. Some might go over, some might come under, um, but it's up to you. You can, I mean, do your best. Obviously, I have a traceable if you want it, but if you want to just freehand draw it, that is totally fine. You can totally do that too. Um, but yeah, that is kind of the housekeeping of my live class. 
Um, let's go over supplies. So if you haven't already drawn on your um, thing, you can kind of maybe get a rough draft right now. I will be kind of going over where mine is just because you can't really see it and I want you to be able to see it. Um, so if you want to wait, you can. But if you want to get a head start, feel free to do that. Um, for my supplies, so today we are using a few different brushes. Um, we may not use all of these and we may use a couple different ones. It's just kind of um, based off of how it's going and what I feel like we'll need. Um, but I will be using a large filbert. I use a large filbert for all of my backgrounds. Um, you could use a, um, a large square one. This one's a little bit frayed so I don't use it anymore. I use it for texture. Uh, but you could use a wash or a one inch uh, square is fine. Um, I have a small filbert. Filberts are really great for petals and things like this because they naturally have a roundness to them. Uh, filberts are just flat brushes with an oval tip so they are very nice for getting that um, for helping to get that roundness to it. And then we have a we have two round brushes. One is a medium size and then one's a small. And then I also have a line brush, liner brush for detail work. This isn't necessary. You don't need a liner brush, but it will make your job 100% easier when trying to get all those little tiny details. Um, so yeah, but it also depends on how detailed you want to get. If you want it to be a little bit more whimsical, like my pumpkin that we did last week, uh, then you don't need one of those. You can just kind of do big brush strokes and get the gist of it. But if you want it to be more, a little bit more realistic, you're going to want to get those tiny details. So it's up to you what you want to use um, and how we're going to do it, okay? Um, hello from Cali. I'm also from Cali, California. And then, um, hi Tanya. She's from Ontario, Canada. Um, okay, so we have our brushes. Obviously, we have the water, paper towel, your palette and then I also always have my trusty small palette knife for mixing uh, paints if you do not have one of these you don't have to use it if you have like um, a potted palette or a paper plate that's totally fine I would suggest mixing with the smallest brush and like a just like a small round brush if you don't have a palette knife um, but these are really really handy for mixing large quantities of paint without um, one wear and tear on your brush uh, mixing paint in your brush can sometimes leave streaks if you use that brush afterwards because maybe it's not all mixed in there. And then third, um, you're dirtying your water before you even start <laughs> because you have to like rinse it out to, anyways. So I, my trusty, my trusty palette knife, I love it. Um, highly recommended. Um, and then for our paints, usually I say what, <laughs> what Frederick's, um, Let's back up. I have my 11 by 14 canvas. This one is my last one from Fredericks. I'm sad that it's my last one. Um, but they gave me, they gifted me probably like six or seven boxes of canvases and it was amazing and super thankful. So they gifted that at the beginning of the year and I'm just now reaching the end of that supply. Um, so thank you Fredericks for all of the classes that you supported during this. I'm really thankful for that. Um, but yeah, so that's, I'm using Fredericks, um, artist canvas 11 by 14. You can use any size you want. Um, again, in my, in my traceables, I have 11 by 14 and, uh, nine by 12. If you are using a different size canvas and you want a traceable, if you're a patron and you want a traceable for a different size canvas, just let me know. It'll be super quick and easy for me to just um, scale it down or make it larger for you. Um, obviously if it's larger than a, an 11 by 14 you'll have to have, like print out like four of them to like tape it together. Um, so just let me know and I can always do that for you. That's part of being a patron is I can kind of customize things for you, okay? Um, and then lastly we have our colors for today. Um, so we have our black and white our raw umber was is just a dark brown medium yellow um you could also and i'm i might get this out i have this really really bright lemon yellow which i think would be really great for that really bright um outside edge and really pop of color so if you have a lemon yellow i don't know if this is going to show 
on screen. Oh gosh, let's see one of my other cameras. Uh, that one's probably the best. So it's very, very bright. It's like lemon yellow. So this is my medium and this is my, I don't know why it's not focusing, um, but that's the difference. There you go. So this has like got more of an orange tone, which is like probably the, the base for our, um, our drawing. And then you have, you have the lemon yellow. So if you have a lemon yellow, go for it. I think it would, it would be great. I might use it. Um, otherwise you can just use your yellow and white to brighten that up. It'll be a little bit softer, but it'll still be bright. Okay. Um, and then lastly, um, I have orange and then I have, this is the pretty much the only green I use. I like using a lighter green because I can dull it down if I need to, or I can use it as a bright. I can really make any color of green with this by adding my black, yellow, brown, blue, white, all those colors. Um, I can really make any shade of green from that. So that's what I use. But if you have a different green, if you already have a green, that's like roughly that color, don't bother, um, trying to follow me. Just use the green you have. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions before we get started? I am open ears. Or I should say open eyes because I'm reading them. You know, haha, <laughs> didn't um, Let's go ahead. Um, if no one has any questions, I'm going to go over the basic shapes of this. And we are just going to go in with our yellow and just kind of sketch this on. Um, obviously, if you already sketched it on with a... With a um, pencil, I would still highly recommend going it over, um, going over it with your paint because what specifically because we are using yellows and whites for this, the yellow paint will mix with your graphite. If you used a normal, normal number two pencil, um, your your paint will mix with it at least a little bit so by going over your sketch with like a drawing paint essentially it will one it will it'll mix with that which is fine because once it dries then when you paint over it, it's not going to mix anymore like what what's done is done and it's it'll it'll dry um so that's one of the reasons why i also like doing that specifically because we're using lighter paints that's going to mix it also it's just helpful for later you'll be able to see it better um, I'm going to grab my medium yellow so I have two remember I have two I have the medium yellow and then I have lemon yellow if I just say yellow it's probably I'm probably referring to the medium yellow I will say lemon yellow if I use it okay so I have my yellow and then I'm going to I don't think I'm gonna dole it down any maybe I'll add a little bit of white to it just so it's not so bright but we're going to be doing a coat of yellow anyways so maybe i'll make it darker i'm actually going to make it a little bit orangey a little bit orangier just so that when we're going over it with our um our base coat See, this is thinking ahead. When you're going over it with your base coat of yellow, you don't want to lose your sketch. And if we just do it in the yellow, the color that we're going to do the base coat in, you're going to lose your sketch, especially if you didn't draw it on beforehand. So I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to get my just small brush. You don't have to use a liner brush for this. Just get your small brush, dip it in water, and I'm going to grab some yellow and a tiny bit of orange and that will just make a light a very very yellow orange a light orange that way when we do our base coat in yellow we'll still be able to see it I am gonna lighten it up just a little bit with white though so it's not obnoxiously bright orange I'm gonna get more water now the trick with this is to make it a good consistency. If you're using full body acrylics, you'll need to water it down a little bit. 
if you're using the ones in the bottles, not these because these are full body acrylics, if you're using the craft ones in the bottles that you get from like, they're like 99 cents a bottle, um, those are soft body acrylic acrylics and they will be more liquid. You probably won't need to, um, you won't need to add any water to them. Those are already going to be plenty fine for what we're doing right now. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is if I were just plainly putting this on there and I haven't done any sketching, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where that circle, that initial circle of yellow is. Okay. And I'm going to just put this here. And you're just going to kind of sketch this in. It doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then you're going to do your inner circle. Okay. And then from there, if you wanted to do a circle going all the way around, you can. I already have mine on here, so I'm not going to do that. But you can do that. You are going to cover up all of this. Okay. So don't worry about if it's if you can see the lines or anything like that. Um, if you have a line going through your petals, that's fine because later we will be able to put layers on top of it that will cover it up. So don't don't worry about it if it's like if you're seeing it through. That's the point. Um, so pretend you have your um, your circle, um, or maybe you do have a circle because you haven't done this yet. Um, then you're going to you can either do just lines like this to figure out where you want your stuff um, or you can just start putting in roughly where that it where it is you can look at the picture you can draw your own flower um, normal flowers are not like perfectly symmetrical um, some of the flowers some of the petals are going to be fat because they're bending backwards some are going to be more upright this one's kind of hanging over the edge this one's turned to the side so it looks skinnier um, so however you want to do it this is your flower and you get to you get to do it however you want and know that this is the sketching phase so if you draw something and you're like that looks off change it so let's say that like this one is too fat you know and I'm like oh I don't like that it's too fat just draw another line that makes it thinner and then when you're coloring in your background just go over that line okay does that make sense so this is the part this is like a lot of people are afraid of like blank canvases but I encourage you, once you start putting this on, it gets a lot easier, especially knowing that if you mess up, like this stage, you can't mess up. That's kind of that's kind of the point of it, is you can't mess up during this stage because you just can't. I would say the only the only thing that you could do is maybe put on too much paint, but you just like you just let it dry and then you paint over it. Um, so on the original, on the top two, there's two going out of the top picture. There's this one, and there's the one right next to it, and then there's one kind of peeking, peeking behind. Um, if you did use the traceable for the 11 by 14, you will have to put in um, the edges of these because the paper obviously is not big enough. It's a, it's a normal piece of paper eight and a half by eleven so you will need to put in um the edges but that's you can at least get the basic shape of the flower so i'm just going back into my my color my water adding that to it and just slowly putting these in
And the other option is, is before you start, once you get everything um, done, you can go back through, let, like let's say, okay, I have my, my shapes and everything. I can go back in with some white and just cover up any, any one that I'm like, no, I don't want that. So I'm gonna cover up that one, come back in. I'm actually going to change this. And have it lower. Like that. So now it's a little bit more hidden. That way when I come in with my initial coat, it's going to be a little bit easier to cover up. But again, we're going to be doing a bunch of coats. So like you don't have to do that, but if it makes it easier for you to know what lines you're keeping, do it. I know sometimes it's easier for me to know, like, wait, which line? What was I thinking when I drew this? Like, I don't remember. I don't remember which line I was doing or what I was keeping. So that is the base. You do want these lines to come, make them come down a little bit into that initial circle. Like don't have them stop at the circle, have them come into it. Because if you'll notice, the color of the flower goes from like a yellow orange, there's a green section, and then there's a yellow section that kind of blends in to the stamen so it does come lower even though that initial circle is right there the actual petals go down a little bit farther okay um all right so i think that is good now that we have that going let's work on um Let's work on our background. And I'm just gonna do like a plain kind of green background. Um, I'm not gonna put too much detail in it. Um, you can have as much fun with the background as you want. You can try to make it kind of blurry like it is, have that white piece or the black piece, whatever. You can um, do bokeh if you want to. Um, totally up to you. I'm just gonna do kind of like a blurry, not much to look at background. Um, I am going to keep it green though because the green ties really nicely into the, um, the green of the flower. So yeah, I'm going to make a lovely background color with this bright green. And you might be wondering, how are you going to make a green from that color? Well, you see, I'm going to grab my bright green and my brown. a lot of brown but that's okay um, and I actually am not gonna need as much as that says but that's okay I'm also gonna grab out my black just to dull it down if I need to just a little bit of black if I can have any left in here just a little little bit and I'm actually gonna put some of this brown back the nice thing about having Things like tube, uh, not tubes, about having containers like this, is I literally just get to scoop it back up and put it back in. When you have the, um, the other ones, you can't really do that. So then you end up wasting paint. <laughs> um, okay, and then I already have yellow out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this green and I'm going to leave some of it out just so I have a little bit of green. I'm going to grab some brown, tiny bit of black, just like the tiniest smidge. 
and a little bit of yellow. We'll see how this comes out. All right, this is probably a really good color for like the darkest areas. So I'm gonna take some of this and I'm gonna lighten it up with yellow and the rest of this green. I'm also going to add some white to it. So I'm just going to do like a two-tone um, color in the back and feel free to do whatever type of style background as you want. You can do bokeh, um, you can just do it blurry. But yeah, I'm going to start from the right corner, the right upper corner and just work my way around. Just starting with the lighter color. Just get the sides here. I can't see it from over there. I just painted the top there. And now I'm going to paint the rest. So I'm doing my best to kind of stay out of the that like area. You can put other colors in the mixture as you're going. Um, so for instance, I'm just going to lay on this green. And then while it's still wet, I can go in with either white or black or brown or light green um, and mix it in while it's still wet. Once it starts drying, you're gonna wanna stop messing with it because then you'll end up pulling the paint off and you don't wanna do that. So as you can see now, it's all kind of one color. I can come in with my, my white and blend that in. I can come in with a black and just kind of blend that in if I wanted to. You can make it super smooth um, or you can make it choppy in the background. It's totally, it's up to you. I'm using I'm using the picture as inspiration, but I'm not really I'm not really going 
exactly how it is. I'm just kind of being careful to go around my layout. It's okay if I go in a little bit, that's fine, because we're gonna come around and make that make those lines better. But I'm gonna go a little bit darker with some brown. Whenever you're painting um, one layer backgrounds, which means I'm not going to go over the background again, like this is going to be the background. Um, so that's why I call it one layer. Whenever you do a one layer background, you want to make sure that it's thick, especially with a color um, such as green that tends to have a little bit of a, um, it tends to have a little bit of a thinner application a little bit more translucent application you want to make sure that your paint is thick and has those like black and whites in it because otherwise it'll be translucent and you'll be able to see um, you'll be able to see that through it so that's one of the reasons why I like this background is because it already has like those black and white elements kind of like in it, in the background. So any place where I see it's a little bit translucent, I'm just adding my black or my white and that helps the translucency to go away. So the stuff at the top is starting to dry, so I want to be quick and make sure that it is how I want it to be before it dries. And if this wasn't a live class, like you could probably do, um, you could probably just pause it and do a second coat if you wanted to. Like if if the coat that you put on is is a little bit too um, too translucent and it's just not working for you um, just pause it and wait for it to dry and do another coat that's totally fine um, now I went in here and I'm going to go in here as well. Um, it probably won't be that big when I'm finished, but I do want to get a little bit of that green in there. So that is the background. And backgrounds like this are always fun because it's like, they don't have to be perfect. They're supposed to be blurry. Um, so it just makes it really easy to like not mess up. 
Um, Patricia has a question. I was late for class and was wondering what kind of paint that you are using. Acrylics. Yes, I am using acrylics. I'm using full body acrylics. So these are the ones that typically come in the tubes, um, but this brand, they come in the bottles. So um, these are the same type of bottles that usually have craft paint in them, but, but don't be deceived. I'm using full body acrylics. So it's usually the stuff that comes in the tubes. They're professional acrylics. Um, I'm using the ones from Hippie Crafter. Um, and then some of my colors are refills from either Liquitex or um, the Hobby Lobby brand. I'm blanking on what what their brand is. What their brand is. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, so while that dries, I'm going to go in with some white and just... Because our next layer is going to be that yellow, I really want these edges, the ones that I came in, I came into a little bit, to be the same, all the same color as the rest of it. So I'm actually going to use my white and go in and clean up the outer edges. So I'm starting over on the on the right, or at least I should have, because I know that that's dry. And feel free to use a smaller brush if you need to. And I'm just crisping up all these lines. So that when I come over with the yellow, it's all going to look clean. some more white. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to um, clean up this section. I know that I'm, I don't want that much green, but I wanted to have the option. So I'm just going to clean that up as well. And then once you do that, you see this line right here? This line of paint that I've created, I'm just going to brush that into the petal so that there's not like that texture. Because at this stage, I don't, I don't want that texture. I don't really want that texture yet. I don't mind that texture later on, but in the preliminary stages, I don't, I don't want that. I'm just brushing each time I do it I make sure to brush brush that paint back into the petal and this is also the stage that if my let's say I didn't go all the way to the yellow line with my green and um, 
there's a little bit of white in between the green and the yellow. Uh, the yellow, that being like that orangey thing that we drew with, the orangey color we drew with. Um, just go all the way to the green and make your petal um, fulfill, like go all the way to that edge so that you don't have raw canvas. out there because you can adjust it this is your painting you can adjust anything you need to all right i'm going to make this section a little bit thinner this I'm actually going to bring out further to the edge. See how it kind of comes out more? I wasn't looking at the picture when I was um, putting in the edges, so I'm just going to adjust it here. And extend it out. See how I'm changing the shape of it? Um, but because I did go over green, I am going to need to have a little bit thicker of paint and let that dry before I go in with my yellow. Alright, I think that is good. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. We are going to get our um, our medium yellow and do a thin coat of yellow so our water and our medium yellow I'm gonna grab my big brush I'm going to start over here because I know it's dry over here. And I'm just going to cover the entire thing. And this should be a fairly quick process. because I have, because it is a bit watered down, it should go on thin and nicely, very easily. We're just trying to glaze this entire thing and get this first coat on. Just try to make sure that there's no streaks and if there is, um, just go in the direction that the petals naturally grow. That way, if you do have any streaks, 
they're going in the in the right direction you won't be able to notice or people will think that they're intentional because they are get more of my medium yellow On the very edges, if you still have green, you can use a thicker coat of your yellow, not as watered down, if you want. Or really anywhere where you have a have a piece of um, color that you don't want, you can use a thicker coat of paint on. For instance, this uh, this one that I um, made longer, this one that I made longer, I'm going to. Oops, I got my got the wrong yellow. Um, I'm gonna just put the yellow right on there.
All right, so that is our base. That's our base coat. Now is where the fun begins. Um, I'm going to start by I'm going to start by adding some streaks of yellow and orange. Um, I'm even going to start with this orange that I already created. And just kind of see. See if we can just start adding some texture. Um, so I have my orange. I'm gonna grab some more white. Ah. Stuck to me. All right, I'm gonna get out more yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a brown or sorry not a brown an orange. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit of this orange and mix it with my yellow. take my my large brush I'm still using my large brush and I'm going to use this and I think I'm gonna start over here and I'm just going to add some texture here I'm just going up and down so I'm holding my my brush at a, at a um, perpendicular angle or like a parallel angle to the um, to the petals and I'm just stroking this some strokes can go all the way up but you don't want all of them to go up I'm just gonna go one by one And most of the orange, we'll be adding more layers of orange. So where this isn't the darkest, this is like the medium tone orange. And it's okay if there's streaks. This is like one of the few um, one of the few times that like you kind of want those streaks. getting and remember that there's gonna be green right here so Start adding some of this. If it's not going on very well, try to add just a touch of water to your paint.
this one down here you kind of can't see the the green so it kind of starts with the orange go a little bit darker with my orange It's a little bit much, so I'm going to rinse out my brush and blend that in a little bit. So now I'm just kind of adding another layer on top of it. I'm trying not to cover up all of what I've already done. So essentially, you do you do a little bit and then when you go darker, you cover up even less and even less and then you just keep working covering up just a little bit less each time. I'm going to come back with some white and lemon yellow. And just a touch of the medium yellow. And if you don't have lemon yellow, that's fine. Just do your other yellow. And here's where you can be a little bit more intentional about your streaks, kind of being all next to each other.
you can pull that yellow back into the orange. And I'm just going one by one, each petal. All right. I'm going to come back and add a lighter yellow a little bit later. For now, I want to start on the green and kind of work our way in. I still have this um, kind of medium green that I'm going to take what is not dry, provided it's not dry. Okay, so this is what is not dry. And I'm going to take this and dull it down just ever so slightly. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of black. So I'm essentially adding gray to it because black and white make gray. So that's going to dull it down just a little bit. Because I'm adding both black and white, it shouldn't necessarily change um, the bright like the how dark or light it is it's just changing the saturation of it okay so i'm gonna grab my filbert and i'm gonna grab this color and i might need to do two coats so i might need to um I might need to do, I might need to make more of it. But we will see. So essentially, I'm just going to start adding. this to the bottom and in no particular order you're gonna add it in kind of like a squiggly motion with lights those little like pieces um, I'm gonna lighten it up ever so slightly because I think having a little bit more of that white in it would be helpful. So by using the brush at an angle and go like having it go in the direction of the petal, I can create thin peaks with the same brush that I can brush flat. I'm 
there's no like rhyme or reason for it. It's kind of random. At least from my observation. And you're just going to do this all the way around. As you get closer to the front, make sure that they are thinner, like the section of green is thinner because it's coming towards you, it's coming closer to you. So the angle of it, you're, you're viewing it, um, you're viewing it at such an angle that it's going to look shorter to you and you want to, you want to do that to give the illusion that it's shorter, that it's like coming towards you. Alright, so once we've done that, we can get a little bit, um, I think I'm going to go a little bit lighter. So I think I need to make a whole new color. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my green, I'm going to grab my white my black, my brown, and I'll probably need to add more white for sure, but let's just see where we're at. Yeah, 
I need a lot more weight. I'm almost thinking I need a little bit of yellow too because it's kind of got a little bit more of a yellow tone and less grayish. So I'm going to add more white and I'm going to add yellow. All right, so while this green dries, I'm going to grab some um, some of this green that I just created and add a little bit of brown to it. And I'm going to add that to the top of all of this. Just gonna gently follow it, adding it to the top of it. Alright, now I'm going to grab this brown and mix it with some of this orange and I'm going to brush down on the bottom of it. It's kind of like dry brushing. And it's just adding a little bit of a dark edge on the yellow. And before we add that dark edge in between the, the brown that we just did and the green, we're going to go over the green one more time. Um, but I am going to get my white out so that, oh, I have white out, so that when, as I'm going through it, I'm going to create those little highlights and lowlights that my, um, that my petal already has. So I'm not necessarily looking at the picture anymore because I want to look at what my petals are doing and where those highlights and lowlights are. Um, I'm still gonna create a little bit of those, um, a little bit more contrast in the petals, but we can do that a little bit with this as well. So I'm going to grab my green and just kind of starting anywhere you want, I'm going to Wherever there's dark, you're gonna add the dark and then you can come back in with your white. Maybe 
maybe I'll just make a green here instead of my white. I think that will work better. So make make a light uh, like a white green instead of um, just putting pure white on it. I think mine still needs to be more yellow. As I'm putting it on the canvas, it's still looking a little bit too, um, too gray. So I'm going to try to put more yellow in it and see if that helps. Because I think it needs to be lighter, but white will lose the uh, will take away the saturation. Yellow will keep it, will make it lighter, but it'll also, it's not gonna, you're not gonna lose saturation. I think that's probably better. It's funny because it looks good on the on the palette, but then when you put it on the on the canvas next to all the other colors that are on there and it's like oh I don't think it's the right color but that's part of the fun trying to figure out if you like the color or not I think I like this color better so I'm not over here I'm going to create a lighter version of it I'm just going to you get to the petals that are kind of behind the other petals don't be afraid to put a little bit of black in there to give some some depth I'm just working through it, each petal at a time. I'm gonna add some of the green. Add some of like the, the main color green. And then I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of that light color. And add it where it already is or where I think I want it to be. back over the ones 
on this side because they had the different color green. I want it to all be the same green. So hopefully by now you can start seeing the shape of the flower and of the petals start to come to life a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of black and what I'm going to do is I'm at the edge I'm going to go down and kind of give it that bottom, that bottom black edge. And then I'm going to gently brush up into the, into the green kind of where those distinctions are a little bit. And this is just going to add a level of detail. And it shouldn't take too long. Don't be too precise with it. Nature isn't really precise. You can even you can also come back when you have less paint on your brush and brush up a little bit. Hopefully this is relaxing, it is as relaxing for you as it is for me. So again, I'm taking barely any black and I'm going 
going under the bottom of my green and then a few spots I'm just lifting that black in to further the green. At this point, I'm going to grab a little bit more of this darker orange color. And with a fairly uh, dry brush, I would say, I'm going to darken um, some of these areas that I want more pronounced in my puddles. And I'm gonna grab, I'm actually gonna grab a tiny bit of um, brown, just to ever so slightly darken it. So I'm particularly making it darker right next to the green. Let's go ahead and work on the bottom. Um, I'm going to get my yellow out and um, I'm 
I'm going to dirty it up ever so slightly by adding a little bit of brown and maybe a tad bit of orange to it. Kind of make a um, like a mustardy yellow. I'm just going to add some texture. I'm coming in this direction. I'm following each petal as it comes in and that's the direction that I'm painting. And now I'm just going to paint the inside of this. I'm trying to keep my brush strokes all going out from the center, like in and out from the center, and not side to side. Now I'm going to go in with a like a darker brown in the very middle, with the very very center being slightly lighter. So I'm just going to. Mix that in. And I'm going to add just a little bit of darkness, a little bit more darkness to the to the edge right here because essentially we want to create contrast and without contrast we're not going to see all those um, the little stamen that's um, peeking up so we're trying to create the shadow like the inside of it And the first thing we're going to do um, is, I think I actually, I'm going to make the inside a tad bit darker. I want it darker. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. I'm still making the inside a tad bit lighter than the rest. A lot of stamen you can get away with just like stippling, but I really want the inside. I want the inside to look cool. So I'm going to, oh my gosh, I just got pee on my face. Um, I'm going to grab my um, liner brush. You can also use just a small brush. And I'm gonna grab my plain yellow, my, um, my medium yellow and I'm going to do a bunch of dots and I'm going to pull it down so I'm going to do a dot pull it down do a dot pull it down do a dot pull it down and I'm gonna do that all the way around. Maybe not as close as I'm doing it now. And I'm pulling it all in the same direction. I'm pulling it in the direction of the, like the stamen is kind of going down away from me. 
and that's the direction that I'm trying to pull it. <coughs> and the stamen, like the very center of the stamen, I feel like is the only part that is like everything is perfectly up like not next not right next to each other like it's very much like it looks like a pattern so if you're a perfectionist feel free to go ham and biscuits on this particular spot so now that that's there, I'm going to go back over it to make it pop even more. Can you really tell what you're doing? Yes. I think I can go closer. I'm really just putting dots. That's all I'm doing. I'm just putting dots in the middle. I'm just trying to really get them to pop. And if you wanted to, you could just stipple this, and that would probably be fine too. I just really like the the look of this in the center, or this flower. I think it's really cool. So I wanted to replicate that, or at least try. You're welcome. All right. So there's that. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Um, and now essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my I'm going to take my, um, what I call my, my stipple brush because it's very, um, very frayed at this point. It's an old brush. Whatever frayed brush you have. Um, and I'm going to add just some texture over this dark color. You want to make sure that you don't cover up all the dark color. And I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to add that. And I'm going to add some darker bits and start adding that. Just to give some texture and now I'm 
I'm going to take some white and yellow, some lemon yellow. Let's see if I can see if we can create some fun like What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back of my brush, so the handle, dip it into this color, and I'm going to just add some of these in the form of dots. It'll give it texture, it'll give it highlight, it's fun. I'm just going to add this all around in this section. Again, I'm using the back of my brush, I'm using the handle for this part. Now I'm going to take some brown with the front handle. Make sure you make sure you wipe off the back of the handle or else you'll <laughs> you'll get it in you. I'm going to take some black and, or sorry, some brown and put in some little lines. And it will start to give the illusion. These, these are all like poking out. The next thing I'm going to do is take some of this light orange and I'm just going to um, use that to kind of define a little bit more of the um, where the petals are.
I'm going to, let's see, I think what my needs is now I'm going to take my white and lemon yellow Maybe a little bit of my normal yellow and white. And I'm going to add some highlights. I think this is green. I had some green in my white to start over. Um, so I'm going to add some highlights to my to the edges of my. Um, petals And if you have any of your lines still from your drawing, you can use this to cover it up. And if you haven't put any dark edges on the um, next to the edges of the um, of each of your petals, um, you can go ahead and do that. And this will this will give the illusion that the petals are like in front of each other by just giving that little bit of 
depth and darkness on the edge. You're not really outlining it, you're just giving a little bit of shadow. And that helps push it back and pull it. So for instance, you can see, you can really see the difference here, I'll show you. So you have this one, right? You, like I know that this petal is behind these two petals, but if I just give a little bit of darkness to that petal behind it, all of a sudden it pushes it back a little bit. And it looks like it's behind behind it now. You see that? And I think that that was a little bit too brown, so I'm gonna come behind myself and brighten it up with orange just a little bit. But you get the idea. Just adding a little bit of that contrast. do the same thing over here and that's also a way that you can kind of cover up your line marks if you still have them And if you already have, if you already have darkness, try to go the other direction. So here I had a lot of darkness over here. So instead of adding darkness to one petal, I added lightness to the other.
can see just right there I just added shadow on either all of the, the sides that it made sense for me and now you can like show the difference you can tell the difference between it I think I'm gonna put green on the edge here because it makes sense in my picture I think I'm gonna go in one last time with just my pure yellow and add a brightness because I went in with my like my white color and it dulled down the brightness of it just ever so slightly so I think I'm gonna go in with a slight uh, just kind of pure yellow wash see if I can bring back some of that brightness of that yellow. I'm just, I'm really only focusing on the tips here. Just the tips of the petal. And then I'm just glazing it down and blending it into the rest. You can see the difference between this one over here and that one. That one looks more white and this one looks more yellow. I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do one thing only because it's bugging me. There's like a white line right here. I don't know if you could see that. It's just from the, I never went over the base white coat color right there. So it's peeking through. I'm just gonna, I don't mind if it's lighter, but I don't wanna wait.
think lastly I'm just going to add a couple more of these stamen in the kind of white yellowish color not quite white because I don't I don't want white in here but a light yellow is fine and I think I think that's all I'm going to do maybe we'll put a couple thicker couple thicker um, pieces of brown in here. couple of these are going on the inside. Some of them are going over. Reaching up into the um, the stamen. Those last few steps on the stamen really made a difference. It made it look more, I don't know, enveloped in it. But yeah, I think it came out really, really great. I really like the colors, the vibrancy. Um, there's a couple weird things that happened um, earlier, but yeah, I love it. I hope you do too. I hope you enjoy class. Again, I have my Facebook um, I have my Facebook community where you can share your, um, you can share your paintings with me, especially if you painted with me live, I would love to see them, um, in the next couple days. Um, but even if you're painting this, I don't know, a year from now, um, you can still go in there and, um, yeah, you can still go in there and add yours to the album or even just to the normal page. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to uh, having you in the next class. I will be posting the next, uh, next month's tutorials on my Facebook page. So um, here is the community, the Facebook community link and then I'll post my Facebook page right now as well. All of these links are in the um, description as well. So um, make sure to follow me and all the social platforms um, so you can uh, follow along, okay? Uh, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.